Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. The other day I was thinking to myself, what are the most popular designer fragrances right now? What could those be? Now when I say popular, I don't mean on Fragrantica. I don't mean in the fragrance community. I mean what fragrances are the best sellers for each brand at retail stores right now today? And that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. I'm gonna go over 10 different fragrance houses and their best-selling fragrance as of right now in stores. So let's jump into it. Now I thought this would be interesting because you can't always tell what's selling really well in stores based off of what's being hyped on YouTube or on forums or any other place like that. And that's because the average person that buys a fragrance it's just going into a store, spraying stuff on, and walking out with whatever they like, or they're buying the 15th bottle of whatever fragrance they've been wearing for the past 10, 15 years. So I wanted to see how different the best sellers are versus what gets talked about nowadays in terms of fragrance releases. Now you may be thinking to yourself, how did I come up with this list? How did I determine the best sellers? Well, yeah, not really scientifically. I just went to all the, the main retailers in the United States, went to their websites, I should say, sorted everything by best selling and figured it out from there. I was really on nine out of 10 websites, these fragrances were the best sellers for their respective brands. So it's pretty easy to see that if they're the best seller on 10 out of 10 or nine out of 10 websites, those are probably the ones that are the best sellers common sense. So let's get things kicked off with Christian Dior. Now, what would you think is the number one seller for Christian Dior? Yeah, don't overthink it. It's Sauvage Eau de Toilette. It's got bergamot, black pepper, Sichuan pepper, and ambroxan as some of the notes in the fragrance. This is really well known for being a compliment monster, a compliment beast with great performance to go along with it. And yeah, that's actually exactly what it is. There's also Sauvage Eau de Parfum, which was just below this one on most of the websites in terms of the sales. And there is Dior Sauvage Parfum. And that one apparently sells the least of the trio. This one does catch a decent amount of hate from some people in the community for being an Ambroxan bomb, for not being artistic enough. But if you're looking for a fragrance that's just wearable, basically any time of the year, day or night, this will do it for you. Next up, let's go with Versace. Versace has some very popular fragrances that lots of you out there own. Some big, big hitters, especially at discounters because Versace fragrances at discounters go for a really good price typically. Their most popular fragrance is Eros Eau de Toilette. And this is one of the best selling fragrances, period. It was right toward the top of every single store's bestseller list. It has mint, green apple, ambroxan, vanilla, and tonka as some of the notes in the fragrance. Really well known for being a great clubbing scent, but it's more versatile than that. I've worn this to the office a bunch, many, many times. Just take the number of sprays that you would do if you were going out to a club and dial it down. Yeah, maybe by 70%, and then you can wear it to the office. It's a very sweet fragrance. When it was first released, people actually hated on it for being sweet, and then the more people smelled it, the more they realized, hey, this stuff is actually really good as far as getting positive attention. It's got great longevity, great projection. And then people started to come around and really enjoyed it, obviously. So Versace Eros beats out Versace Pour Homme, Versace Mano Fresh, Versace Dylan Blue. This is the number one seller as of right now. Next up, let's do Dolce and Gabbana. Now this one, you would think maybe the one, Eau de Toilette or Eau de Parfum. You would think maybe light blue O intense, but no, it's actually just uh, this one, light blue, the original. Now this one was a surprise for me because I thought it would be the one Eau de Parfum. That's what I expected. And if not the one Eau de Parfum for some reason, then I figured the one Eau de Toilette. No, light blue. And with the amount of hype that light blue O intense has gotten over the years, I thought, you know, if it would be light blue, it'd be that one. This one though is standing the test of time. Maybe it shouldn't be as much of a surprise because this always is running low on stock. When I go to my local stores and look at the fragrances, it seems like people buy this stuff nonstop, just always. And the few times that I've seen this for sale at TJ Maxx or uh, Ross's or Marshall's, it's actually typically stolen, so. I guess it's popular enough to risk getting caught committing theft. 
Yeah, I don't know if that's a positive or not, but it seems to be the case. Nowadays, though, at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross's, I think they would put this inside one of those little plastic boxes that they have to unlock at the cashier. Because in the past, when they haven't had it in those, that's when I find just empty boxes <laughs> scattered around like a light blue graveyard or something. This has citrus, pepper, juniper, incense, and rosemary, some of the notes in the fragrance. And this is one that I'll feel like, oh, you know, light blue, it's played out. It's, it's old hat, you know, it smells dated. Then I'll go back and smell it and think to myself, no, it's not so bad. It's one of those fragrances that feels like it's been around forever and uh, you forget what makes it so popular. It's just a really nice, fresh, kind of salty, citrusy, aquatic scent. Easy to wear. And I'm gonna link each one of these below at discounters in case you wanna check them out. In the description I'm talking about, that's where I'm gonna link them. Next up, let's do Yves Saint Laurent. And the fragrance that is selling the best from that brand, Y Eau de Parfum. So this beats out La Nuit de Lome. It beats out the original Lome and the numerous flankers. It beats out uh, Y Eau de Toilette. It beats out everything. This one is one of the top sellers, period, right toward the very top, right near Sauvage and Eros. Huge compliment puller, massively versatile, one of the best blue fragrances on the market. This one has apple, ginger, sage, and amber wood, so it switches things up a little bit from most of the blue fragrances. Instead of going with citrus, like grapefruit or bergamot, which smells fantastic, but instead of that, they go with apple. For me, this one is maybe even a little bit more versatile than Dior Sauvage because it's not as aggressive. You know, the, the ambroxin and the pepper and everything in Dior Sauvage, the eau de toilette I'm talking about, can really push out. You know, it can overwhelm some people. Why eau de parfum, you don't have that issue so much. So this one, one of the best sellers out there and doing better than La Nui and the original loan. Let's go with Giorgio Armani next. And this one was a surprise when I saw it, but it shouldn't have been. Best seller, Aqua de Joe, the original. So Aqua de Joe, best selling mint fragrance of all time. That's why it shouldn't be a surprise. This has sold more bottles than any other mint fragrance ever. It was a surprise though, because Armani Code Profumo, such a big hit. Code Absolute, big hit. Uh, Aqua de Joe Profumo, Aqua de Joe Profundo. Those fragrances you would think would be selling more than Aqua de Joe because they're newer. And yet, no, this is selling more. <laughs> this is selling more than all of those fragrances. Just, it never stops. This is apparently unstoppable and people will be wearing this until the end of time. The apocalypse will be happening and some guy's gonna be in line buying his 58th bottle of Aqua de Joe. This was my signature scent, if you wanna call it that, when I was 17, 18, 19. Yeah, I don't even wanna tell you how many bottles I went through with this stuff. And I'd be lying to you if I said one of the main reasons wasn't the fact that it was a compliment monster, because it was. And every time I wore it, it felt like somebody was coming up to me and going, what are you wearing? It smells so good. So of course I just, just bathed in this stuff. Just, ah, uh, Aqua de Joe rain over me. In case you're unaware of the notes, it's got white florals, it's got citrus notes, it's got a uh, white musk, cedar. It smells fresh, it smells clean, it smells aquatic. Next up, Chanel. Yeah, Chanel, top seller. Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum. So for Chanel, it is not the Eau de Toilette that's the best seller. Hmm. It's got grapefruit, incense, amber, ginger, and woods as some of the notes in the fragrance here. And this one really is, for a lot of people, an improvement over the Eau de Toilette. This one takes the Eau de Toilette's DNA and makes it a little bit deeper, a little bit richer, a little bit smoother. So you could think of it as uh, a more refined, more sophisticated take on the Eau de Toilette version of Blue de Chanel. I just realized I don't really need to say it. Every single fragrance in this list is a compliment pulling, attention grabbing fragrance. What a surprise that those would be the best sellers. Like what? That just makes no sense. So you're telling me that the fragrances that the vast majority of people find to be appealing and good smelling are the best sellers. So anyway, Blue de Chanel, Eau de Parfum, best seller from Chanel, 
It smells fantastic. You can wear this stuff anywhere. And uh, a lot of people will kind of dig in, you know, and say, I'm Team Sauvage or I'm Team Blue de Chanel. But uh, I'm Team both of them, whatever I feel like wearing that day. Okay, next up, let's do Gucci. What do you think it would be from Gucci? <laughs> it's this one, Guilty. Eau de Toilette, the original. Yeah, a lot of people hated on Gucci Guilty, still do hate on Gucci Guilty. And a lot of it has to do with what came before this. Gucci Pour Homme, Gucci Pour Homme 2, Gucci Rush, Gucci Envy. Those fragrances are modern classics, all of them. They're all discontinued. Now you got this. It is really easy to wear though, and people love the way it smells. Gucci Guilty Black as well. People love that stuff. It's a compliment magnet. And anyone who's a fragrance connoisseur, if you tell them, hey, I love Gucci Guilty, they're gonna give you one of these. Cool. And depending on what type of connoisseur they are, they'll be like, you know, that's trash. Let me tell you what's good, in my opinion. This one has lavender, lemon, cedar, orange flower, and patchouli is some of the notes in the fragrance. It's sweet, it's clean, has a little bit of a, a soapy feel to it. Is it a simple fragrance? Sure. But does it smell massively appealing? Yes. It's not gonna change the world, it's not super unique, but what it sets out to do, it does. Paco Rabanne, Paco Rabanne is next. You would think Invictus, but no. One million, the original. That's reflective. I would have thought Invictus, especially considering how many companies have knocked off Invictus at this point, how many different fragrance companies have their version of Invictus. It's a little bit out of control. It's a little bit crazy. So I thought Invictus all the way, you know, all these companies trying to cash in. Now, Invictus does sell really well. It, it's right up there toward the top also, but this one consistently was a bucket. Cinnamon, amber, leather, and mandarin orange. Some of the notes in this fragrance. This one, like Eros, another fragrance that's really well known for being a club banger. Just a monster of a scent that projects out, grabs people's attention, makes them notice you, and then makes them give you compliments. Like uh, a lot of the fragrances here, this one is really sweet. Actually, it might be the sweetest fragrance of the bunch. Yeah, I'd say it is. And this one right here is growing on me over time. You know, I've come to appreciate it for what it is, and I don't mind it now. There was a time that I wasn't the biggest fan of One Million, but it won me over. Next up, Ralph Lauren. This one, I would have thought Ralph Lauren Blue, the Eau de Toilette. Thankfully, that is not their bestseller, apparently, because uh, just to be frank with you guys, Polo Blue Eau de Toilette, that fragrance sucks. Now, I know there's some people out there who still wear it and they'll be like, no, no, don't say that. I love Polo Blue. Good, man, you know, wear it. That's that's cool, but it sucks. The best seller, Polo Red. Yeah, just plain old Polo Red. It's got cranberry, amber, coffee, and saffron, along with a little grapefruit in there. Now, just a quick pro tip for you guys. If you want a better version of this, get Polo Red Intense or Polo Red Extreme. Both are better than this. That being said, this is nowhere near the worst fragrance Ralph Lauren has ever done. It's actually not really a bad fragrance at all. It's solid. It's just intense and extreme or better. The main thing about that fragrance that's gonna draw you in is that cranberry in the opening. It smells really nice, really enticing, really inviting. And it's frankly a note that doesn't get used enough. And the coffee in there as well, as the fragrance dries down, adds a little more nuance, a little more depth. It's solid. Just get intense or extreme. But Polo Red, their best seller apparently. Last fragrance house, we're going with Prada. Now you might think Prada Lome or Prada Lome Intense, but no, no, no. It is actually Lunarosa Carbon wrapping this list up. Prada Lunarosa Carbon smells like Prada's version of Dior Sauvage Eau de Toilette. So of course, if this is one of the best sellers, then why wouldn't this be? It's like the same, but different. It has bergamot, lavender, and broxen and metallic notes in the fragrance. It does everything Sauvage does, basically. It's just not as aggressive, it's a little bit smoother, and some people like that. Some people will say Lunarosa Carbon is an improved Sauvage, so I like this more. Other people will say, no, 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 Sauvage is the best. They did it right the first time. If you've smelled this and you've smelled Sauvage, you know what I'm talking about, they're pretty close. Prada Lunarosa Carbon, that's their best seller. Apparently Lunarosa Black is pretty close. I saw it right near Lunarosa Carbon on a bunch of different websites, and on some websites they were swapped even. 
but on the vast, vast, vast majority of them, Lunarosa Carbon was the best seller. And super quickly here, best seller from Hermes, Terre d'Hermes Eau de Toilette. Not much else to say, you guys are doing that correct, keep buying. So there we go, 10 different fragrance houses and their best selling fragrance in stores. That gives you a little bit of a better understanding of what the average guy is buying or the average girl buying for their guy. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support, stay safe out there. I will see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.